Hello, Carl from CWD. So um, this is one of my one of my first days back. Well, not at work because I'm in my own garage, so I'm not earning money. I'm um, doing my own pond. So we ran into a couple of problems with the pond. Um, I did a couple of videos of sanding down and issues we ran into with the fiberglassing. Basically, what happened is sleepers are quite wet, and I misjudged just how damp they were going to stay inside. Um, on a fiberglass day, I left the door open, I turned the heater off and then it was just full of condensation the next day and then in the bottom corners of the pond, bottom corners, there was areas where the fiberglass hadn't gone off um, I couldn't tell when it was just matting but I could tell when it was flow coat so I sanded it all down, reapplied the flow coat still I couldn't get it, even with having um, two to two two kilowatt heaters on um and the door open and everything all night it was like 29 degrees at one point it wasn't when the five glass was going off it was about 23 24 but i had it going for a good while and it just i couldn't get the five glass to go off um and as you can see the you know the sleepers right up against the wall there so i think moisture just collecting in that corner over there it's not it's not going off i'm gonna have extractor fans in here that i've not got yet so it would have been good to have them while I was doing this. Um, but yeah, so my advice would be don't fiberglass a sleeper pond indoors right up against a load of walls because you probably run into issues. It's not it's not fun, especially when you've got a little crying baby in the house as well. So um, so I, I've reapplied the flow coat once and then I tested it. Um, I mean... The first time that it happened, there, was, there must have just been tiny little, tiny little holes because I was just so, after 24 hours, there was just a tiny little puddle. So it wasn't like the, the room was full, the pond was still full up to, up to below here where I filled it up to. So it wasn't leaking out massively because um, everything would have been knackered in the garage if it was. Uh, all the plaster around there would have all been shot, would have had to replace that. But luckily it didn't. Um, but yeah, it was just I was really annoyed with myself. I was like, oh my god, you know, you just want something doing and things aren't going right. But then I remembered I'm in the pond game. That's just a normal day for me. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you don't like being stressed, don't bother building ponds and things because there's always something going wrong. You every day is a new lesson. Maybe after another thirty years, there won't be any more lessons. But by then, hopefully, I won't be doing any of this. I'll have a team doing it all for me so what i did i bet you're thinking how how did he solve the problem i've had that pond full it was filled up yesterday it's actually empty now um filled it up yeah well the day before yesterday i filled it up um and i just emptied it by siphoning and used the awazi pond vac 4 got a siphon going and then because it's it's ground level and then outside there's a drain out there i just got the pump going i didn't have it continuously going i just unscrewed the end off outside and shoved that down the drain and within an, an hour it had all just siphoned out so that saved me a lot on the electricity bill um but yeah how i solved the problem of wall well lining the pond i was thinking i would have been best just getting a box liner and doing it that way with a box liner you could have everything going within 12 hours 24 hours it can go within 12 hours if you've got a heater on in here and the sealant's gone off you can fill it up, you know, pretty much the same day if you start early enough. Um, so I was, when I was having the issue with the fiberglass in, fiberglass cost me a lot more than a liner would have. Um, I was kind of kicking myself thinking, why didn't I just get a box liner? Because that's, that's normally, nine times out of ten, that's what we do. And if we do have fiberglass in, so we can go and get other jobs done, we have someone else do the fiberglass in now. Um, we used to do it all ourselves, but there's only really three of us uh, one in the office and two out doing things and, you know the, the other lad actually it does things with me outside he's not full time so um yeah it just makes doing jobs faster having you know being able to delegate things out so i did a bit of problem solving i thought i've got my own brand of sealant um so that for me you know it's cheap i sell it to wholesalers so it doesn't cost me too much uh, so what I did is I got inside with in that box there include well those two tubes and that tube well the three tubes there and that tube over there have yet to go in the box 
um, but inside that box are all the tubes of sealant that I used to line this pond. Now, I don't know if anyone else has ever done this before, but I thought, if anything's going to do this, we've got an issue of moisture. I know the sealant would have gone off with a liner, but I would have had to wait a couple, you know, probably five days, four days. You know, I could probably get it within three days, two days if I, if I asked the manufacturers. Uh, I could have had the liner in and sorted, but I thought, I'm interested in knowing whether or not this sealant will work as a liner because you have liquid pond liners, don't you? Now my sealant isn't really liquid enough to actually use as a paint. So you can't paint it on, it's not, it's too viscous. So what tools do, where are they? I'm good at losing tools. That's what I employ people for normally. It's just looking for my tools that I've lost. They're bleeding all over again. I just had hold of them five minutes ago as well. But yeah, I used a plastering trowel and a jointing trowel. Oh, I can just just see the handle there. I've moved, as usually happens, I make a mess in one area, I move it to another. So there's always a mess somewhere. Let's get it. There you go. So these are my new, my new little tools. I'm actually going on a plastering course as well. <laughs> And uh, next week, so next week and the week after, I've got a tiling and a plastering course just to refresh myself because I've not really, I mean, last year I didn't do too much physically myself. We only built about four ponds, which isn't very many for us. Quite a lot of it was selling other things, doing the kits, all that sort of stuff. So I don't want to get rusty like that little, I wiped this with a really strong, um, you know, I had to clean the sealant off with something quite strong, so that's made this stainless steel go rusty, which is brilliant. So I've got my tubes of sealant, as I do with the windows, did a nice thick bead from the bottom all the way up, and I've got a full line and then about a half line. Did them about five inches apart, and then it was just a case of, at first I was using this, and I was just going up with the, you know, using the thin end, but by the time I'd done half of it, I think I might have a couple of videos actually of, I don't think a video of myself doing it, but I just videoed kind of as I'm doing it, you know, like, oh, this is what I've just done. But all I did is just smooth this and you keep going until you, you can feel that you're hitting the substrate and then you just, you know, lightly smooth it off. Now, where's my torch? New favourite tool, this my torch. So let's see how good that looks on the camera. So this is the first one that I've done with this sealant, and don't forget, it's really viscous. Um, and I'm not going to be able to tell until I see this, because I'm looking at this at the moment on a little 3 inch by 2 inch screen, if that. Well, this is what it looks, the, well, the finish that I've managed to get. You can see there is water in the bottom there. It's just, um, I don't want to chuck something in just to make, well, actually, if you open the drain, I'll flush some back. Let's see. There you go, you can see there is water in there. That's still being held. Uh, that's the, uh, we did flush the bottom drain bit into the easy pods. There's a bit of water still in there. But there is water in there, still holding. There's no leaks anywhere. It's doing good. Um, and the finish, if I can, I've spoken to the factory um, that manufactured the sealant for us. And I mean, the quantities that you have to buy of the sealant and anything else are quite large. So I'm, I'm going to have to decide, I'm going to have to decide whether I think it's worth it or not. But I reckon it will end up costing about £20 a square metre for the end user. Um, and it's, I mean, if, if I can get this thinner and you can paint it on, it's going to be better than the epoxy pond paints and things because you can use this while it's slightly damp. You don't have, it doesn't have to be completely um, dry. It works in pretty much all weathers above 25 degrees and below 28 degrees. Um, all we need to do is work on the formula and get it thinner and then you can just apply it. Um, you, I'm going to build a sleeper kit without any OSB board. I'm going to line it with that just to see if that works as well. So it's another, another little product for me to test this year and hopefully get that developed and sorted is the technology is there we know that this sealant works for installing windows it is waterproof it's a very strong adhesive 
it doesn't need to be as strong as it is that's why we can thin it out so that's my next little venture that's what's that what that's going to be um and then that'll have roofing applications so that won't just be for ponds you could apply it on roofs i know there's a product in europe that's similar but it's quite expensive um but yeah if you buy well if, if you're commissioning something to be manufactured yourself and you buy enough of it then you can make it cheap and affordable for for quite a lot of people so that's what i'm looking to do right so that's that pond lined leak tested did a leak test for a day and a half on it um so yeah i'm really excited about this i i made no made no um i didn't lie about not liking fiberglass and i ate it it stinks you get all shards of glass in your fingers um little bumps like this a bloody nightmare just like a little bump there will make all your coping look ridiculous you have to chop all them out or if you're just smearing on a paint or a sealant then it's easy it works and it's it's really easy to tell where where there's a hole um, and if you miss a bit like with flow coat you have to sand everything down or cut a bit out and redo it with this if you miss a bit the next day you just go pop a bit more on you know, it can't be any simpler than that can it um it does feel a bit rubbery but you know so does the liner once it's underwater it's quite slippy so i was a bit worried that fish will be able to like chafe themselves on it um but with fiberglass you have to go around denib that can take you can you can spend a day denibbing sometimes depending on who's done it um whereas this you don't have to denib because it's it's like a liquid rubber sealant um fish even with a sharp bit of it fish can't hurt themselves on it so yeah i'm really excited and um what way to prove that this is non-toxic to fish as well by having a whole pond line in it not just a little bit around a window so if anyone is interested in using this for their pond build um any youtubers anyone like that uh, let me know i'll work something out because i want a few more people doing this and while that's happening i've already spoken to the manufacturer and they're going to send out different samples in five and ten kilo tubs different viscosities see what works best with a brush so um later on this year i should have a few samples so i'll be offering samples out for other people to use as well because i can do things all day long but it's i always feel it comes better from other people 